can't hear you. I'm in Eretz Israel. Oh, I see you're you're above the Holy Land. You're above <laughs> the Makom Mikdash. Yeah. <laughs> Good for you. The Shemikarov. Yeah, right. She bana base the Mikdash from here. Good. Esther Akta, welcome Esther. Nice to have you. Thank you. Nice to be here. Thank you. Where are you physically, Esther? In Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Okay. I don't know if we had any New Yorkers till now. So good to have a New York representation. <coughs> in Brooklyn. We've been to Brooklyn. So good. Now, Esther, is your son also signed up for the program or explain yeah. that part to me? My son and my daughter. Oh, okay. Real family affair. Great. I'm jealous. <laughs> I want my son to do this. Okay. Okay. Nice. Yeah, it's very nice. Okay, um, I, I know that there's two different policies amongst, I, of two, we have two courses going right now, and one, um, Leo is going to be your teacher, Leo is great, I'm going to introduce him at the end of, of this hour that I'm giving today, and Leo, he gives a heart, thank you, Leo, and Leo is very relaxed, he starts 510, 515, whenever, you know, everybody gets in the mood, and my other teacher is a guy named Omer, and Omer, he is what we'd call a yeke. And so it's five o'clock, he's, he's starting, he's ready to go. So different policies, different folks, that's all good. Um, I have 501 or two, or 503 already. So I am, gonna, I am gonna begin my presentation. I'll just say hello to Jackson Russell Pinkerson. Um, I know your brother was from UCLA. Are you out in LA? No, I'm uh, in Givashmoa. Okay, closer than LA. Yeah. Okay, so that's I'm... nice. That's my will. And okay, Susie Grandma, I recall you had been at the open house. And right. Yeah. Welcome, and, welcome. Uh, my name is Shira. I'm just using Susie's computer again. Okay, but I'll tell you what you could do just so not to confuse us. If you go, you know, by your name uh, and you go to more, you can do rename. Uh, I'm not sure what Do you see where the participants in the meeting are? Yeah. So if you go to your name and you'll see a blue button that says more and you click on that. Okay. Can, right. Everybody can do that. It is good for me to see people's names because I actually do take attendance. We'll talk about that uh, today about um, how I keep track of the course. I see that Cheryl Lipschitz answered, hey, she's from England, very old England. I will say that we were fortunate to stop over in London. We made a trip to the States, Benazmanim, and we had a beautiful, basically 24 hours in London and got to see the Queen, uh, Buckingham Palace, and so on and so forth. So that was really good. Yuda Mendelovitz is here, welcome. Moti Beck is here, welcome Moti. Um, R. Gluck, what is R. Gluck's first name? R Ruben. Hi, Ruvain. Welcome. Where are you from? London, England. London, England. Okay, great. So we have a few English. So really yeah. nice. Okay, great. So without further ado, I actually have a real lot of stuff that I want to share today. So I am going to get started. I'm going to put down the stuff. So we're, we've renamed the course CyberWise. It's about IT networks, ethical hacking, and here we're starting. Um, to the class, as you know, is five hours, there's breaks. The breaks are basically at the discretion of the teacher and, and the class, so I'll leave that up to, to Leo. Um, so I'm, but I'm gonna present today for about an hour, giving an overview of our, our program and so forth. So this is the agenda I, I typed up, about who we are, why we collectively are here, Karadim in cyber, am I a hacker? Do I want to be? Uh, the, the state of the world is a situation of cyber war. I'm going to talk about cyber crime. I want to talk about the effects of corona on the cyber industry. In brief, a few attack vectors, regulatory standards, employment in the field, the core structure, the covenant between SOMIT and yourselves. And then I will introduce the faculty and turn over the program to you know, our esteemed uh, top professor, <laughs> Leo. So uh, the truth is, you know, the topics I wrote here are actually the essence of the course over the whole year, but I'm just going to touch on, on a number of things. So my name is Jonathan Ratner, and my wife, Hannah, and I uh, opened Soma Career Counseling 
uh, in 2009 to answer a need in our community to help people turn our, our wonderful community uh, has neglected to a certain degree career training, employment, earning a living. That's something that hasn't gotten as much attention as some other topics and it's, it can be brutal. And so in order to help people find their way, we, um, we brought our education. My wife and I both have master's degrees. Hers is in um, teaching and counseling. Mine is in business management. And we have deep insight into personalities. We've studied a lot about it. We use um, a few different systems of classifying personalities in order to figure people out. So um, if you ever come meet us, you'll see that we have x-ray vision. So be careful, um, even through your face on the Zoom. I'm, I know a lot about you, I, I read faces. <laughs> anyway, uh, our concept was to look at the market. What are the opportunities in the job market? And how can we make a match between those opportunities and the skills and the, the values of the people in our community in order to help people get a job and, and earn an honest living? So we have a diagnostic and online test that we give all our clients who come to us. And um, again, it, it helps us understand people's strengths and personality types. We've developed a number of training programs over the years. The past five years, we've been focusing, of course, on cyber. Placement is of the utmost important to us. Like we're not in it to teach you for the shaming, the shame of the name of teaching, Lishma. We're here to help you get a job. So one of the things I say is that if you're interested in cyber, but you know you don't really want to work in cyber, or you're just sort of curious, so then you know go take a free online course. If you're coming to this course, the expectation is you're going to invest deeply in it because you're investing in yourself and your future. And I'm going to talk later about the details of the covenant between you and us, where we're really going to push hard to help you get your first job in this industry. And frankly, we're going to stick with you as you develop your career down the road. So we have a lot of relationships to cyber companies. We're doing our own cyber um, service uh, providing to companies around the world. And so um, we maintain this valuable network to industry in order to help our students get started uh, in an internship and then to get uh, their first job and more. And so we just had a, a group that just finished, Leo um, finished teaching a, a year uh, course to a, a wonderful group of students. And we, would, we had meetings about three weeks ago in New York City with a great company, uh, an international company. And so now our students are interviewing there. And I just got feedback today from one of our excellent students in Brooklyn that she had a very uh, promising inter first interview and she looks forward to the opportunity there. So that's a big part of what we do, not just teaching you skills and stuff, certainly not just theory, but hands-on stuff, but even after the hands-on stuff of then making it work by opening up opportunities in the workplace. And another thing that, that I personally will teach you along the way is preparing your CV and preparing for an interview and, and so forth because that's a special set of skills, soft skills, that if you learn them and you, you can really make them work for yourself. So that's something that we also will supply you with. This is an overview of sort of what we do where it's a mixture of things inside and out. It's based on the job market. It's based on what you're looking for. Is it full-time, part-time? Do you need to make a lot of money or not? What are your expectations, the expectations of your community and so forth? And then starting on the inside of you, who are you? What are your skills, personality, inclinations? What makes you happy? And, and those things play, play, play a huge role in your success. Because if you're doing something that doesn't make you happy, you're not going to succeed. You may survive, but you won't flourish and prosper. You can't become great at something unless you really enjoy it and it gives you something back. If you find that sweet spot between your skills, your personality and stuff that the market needs, so you can do really well for yourself in a way that feels good and, and is self-fulfillment. So that, that's a big bracha. We can help you get to that place. My personal cyber experience. So I, I mentioned I'm a Rosh Koilil. I get shared this morning. Uh, Baruch Hashem, I have a group of professionals, doctors, lawyers, professors, and others. Uh, we've been learning together over 20 years in Beit Shemesh, Israel. I live in Harnof with my wife and kids and grandkids. Um, I, I made Aliyah to Israel in 87 from Cleveland, Ohio, and I went to Columbia University. Um, in Israel, I got a master's from Boston University. Uh, I spent a year in Russia. My wife is from Moscow. 
And um, when I when I came back, I started working with Russian engineers on commercializing some of their their products. I worked in uh, heart heart stents, coronary stents. I did business development there. And I got to a certain point, I was actually CFO of a publicly traded company and they were invested in some Homeland Security technologies. And through that, I got into what in Israel are called the Bitronistim, people in the security industry. And so I was business development manager for a small company that had bio, uh, biometrics um, in cybersecurity. And there's this wonderful accelerator, technology accelerator of Citibank located in Tel Aviv. And I was able to participate in that program for about six months. And what we had was on your phone, it had face recognition and voice recognition and maybe other stuff of location or fingerprint, whatever. So that if you want to take money out of the Kaspomat, out of the ATM, your phone would determine that it's really you taking the money out because people can steal your card, they can um, scam your pin, but they can't steal your face. Of course, they can steal your face, but it's trickier. Anyway, through that group and my participation in the City Accelerator, I met another company called Sixkill. And Sixkill is a great and successful young company here in Israel. And they, Sixkill is a type of shark that lives at the bottom of the sea. And they are on the dark web, which you will, you will learn about in this course. And that's a huge uh, marketplace of crime, of selling stolen data in addition to weapons and drugs and every bad thing. Um, but I worked for Six Skill again, in, in business development and finance and so forth. And I participated in a cyber uh, intelligence threat workshop in Washington, DC, um, given by SANS, an excellent cyber education company. And so that really got me into the field of cyber. And my wife and I, who as career counselors and you know, developing this, trying to develop uh, career paths for members of our community, we thought this was a really good fit. Um, because I'm going to tell you in a minute what you need to succeed in the cyber industry, and we think that our community has it. And so since then, we've been pursuing this, and Baruch Hashem, we've had a lot of success. Tell, uh, just again, talking about planning your career, career management, and we have people at different stages of the game. Um, in my other class, I have a 70-year-old man who's, who's loving it and doing great. We have, of course, people in their teens, in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s. So people are at different stages of the game and that's all good. And there are opportunities at every stage and different opportunities, right? For people just starting out or people who have experience, et cetera. But career paths in general have changed historically. I had an uncle, he worked 50 years, you know, he was a member of the union and then he got a gold watch when he retired. That's like a train track career. You get on the train and you ride it until the end. Last stop, you get off. That's not so common anymore that anybody has that kind of job security. There was a bus route career where buses, you know, stop at red lights and they can turn left and right, but that's also sort of passe. Today we're, we're an off-road career where you have an off-road vehicle and you got to keep your balance and you're working essentially for yourself. So it takes a lot of creativity, a lot of ability to deal with uncertainty. And I put a picture here of this woman. She has a master class about designing your career, Elaine Welteruth. And she's very energetic and very insightful. She's very successful herself. And she talks about dancing with the fear. And certainly in this course, I mean, nobody was born knowing cybersecurity. And if you're in the course, you don't know a lot about cybersecurity yet. You're gonna learn a ton of cybersecurity this year. But you'll, you have to deal with this fear of, I don't know how to do it. And, you know, oh, sh who should I ask? What should I do? So you got to deal with the fear, overcome it, just dive in. Don't let it hold you back and figure it out as you go. That's like the nature of career development in, in our age. And so you're, you're, the statistics say that you're likely to work in a number of not just different jobs, but different industries, totally different fields over the length of your career. So it's a, it's a dance. Why cyber is a good fit for our community? So there is a huge shortage of talent, both in Israel and the international industry. I'm gonna show you some numbers coming up. The barrier to entry, I call it brains. It's more than brains because it's fingers on the keyboard. It's not just knowing stuff, but actually doing stuff. No college degree is necessary. I know that some of you have college degrees and some of you do not, and both ways are gonna work. 
there's a relatively high pay after a relatively short education. We're not talking about going to medical school here, an eight-year thing, or even a four-year college degree. We're talking about a one-year course. There are flexible work from home possibilities. Our community is characterized by a lot of involvement in family, both for men and women. And so the ability to have flexibility for family or to work from home is really a great attribute. This is my beautiful wife, Hana. She's speaking here at Tel Aviv University Cyber Week uh, next to an is a guru in the Israeli cyber world, a woman named Karen Elazari. I'm just demonstrating that we're really well connected. This is Ann Neuberger, you may recognize her. She's top dog in American cyber defense today, uh, Biden's team, uh, the National Security Agency, et cetera. She's a Beis Yaakov woman, a firm woman, a wonderful woman. Her first cousin actually took her course uh, in the in previous cohort. Another great Haredi woman, she's called Meet the Orthodox Woman at the Top of Israel Cyber Game. Her name is Ola Sergachev, also uh, an Ola from, from Russia. And she, she's on our team. She's a mentor to our students. This is a picture of her at our Hanukkah party, our online Hanukkah party. There she is overshadowing me. Here's another Haredi guy, um, Yisrael Gurt, a very young man who's on you know, Google's list of top hackers in the world. So I, I always like to say he didn't learn cybersecurity, not in Haider nor in Yeshiva Ketana, but it's something that if you have a passion for it and a knack for it and you invest in it, so the sky's the limit of how far you can get. Today, he's the owner and leader of his own startup and he, he's doing really well. This was also a really encouraging statistic for me when I saw this. When I went to that um, cyber threat intelligence workshop in DC, there were men and women there. A high percentage of them had served in the military uh, or were working for you know, the CIA or the FBI, whatever. They maybe didn't advertise that. But they were very much you know, military type people. But 34% of the people in the field have no prior experience. And so again, nobody's born knowing cyber. It's never too late to learn it. And so, to, you know, the, the concept that we're taking people who have no background in cyber and then preparing them for uh, entering the industry and working in, the, in cyber companies, it might be thought, oh, it's crazy, it'll never work. But the thing is, we're five years down the road and it works beautifully. And our students have had remarkable success. And so there's really no, there's no room for doubt at this stage of the game that this pathway really works. I wanted to give you some insights, cybersecurity traits for success. The first one is curiosity, love of learning. It's not like you'll finish the course and then you'll know everything. Anybody who works in cyber continues to learn every day because the hackers are constantly coming up with new ploys. And so you gotta keep learning how to fight them. Critical thinking, understanding the enemy, staying calm under pressure, question everything, be suspicious, be persistent, not overly emotional, okay? And I'll tell you right now, I'll take uh, this opportunity to tell you that I am not a technologist. I have a love-hate relationship with technology. I love it because it allows me to, you know, we're focused, I'm hosting this course. And so we're helping Amisrol and helping individuals to earn a living virtually through technology. And that's wonderful. Um, but I hate technology because it so often doesn't work. And so I say, whoever invented technology should have made sure that it works. But of course, it doesn't, uh, doesn't always work like that. Um, our other teacher, Omer, said that his experience in cybersecurity is 90% frustration, which is a really high number. Uh, but you do have to put up with frustration. Things don't always work. And your job is to figure out how to make them work. So that's what you're going to learn, how to be persistent and overcome uh, failure or things that don't always work. I, I got a graphic here of, uh, let me, no, why am I not on slideshow mode? Um, soft skills, attention to detail, creative problem solving, clear communication, hard skills, information management, computer science basics, specialization in a subset. Okay, so those are stuff. What is hacking? Everybody's heard the word. It's a, it's a Hebrew word already. Uh, why do people do it? In the broadest possible terms, hacking is creative problem solving that takes advantage of the characteristics of a system in a way that they were not designed to be used. Okay, so we all, there's something called life hacks, and you know you can hack anything, whether it's technological or not. So can you become a hacker? Should you become a hacker? Do you want to become a hacker? 
So this, again, this is part of my field of expertise, the psychological profile of a hacker, okay? And I'm not going to go too deep into this today because it, it's not so relevant, but I did want to share it. There's something called Myers-Briggs uh, type indicator. Uh, maybe some of you have heard of it that classifies people and their personalities, whether they're introverts or extroverts, whether they are um, sensing, which means concrete or big picture, whether they're primarily thinking and intellectual, or are they more emotional, and whether they are rule keepers or rule breakers. Okay, And when you put together all those factors, which again, they were formulated by Carl Jung in the 20th century, um, and then advanced by Myers and Briggs, so you come up with 16 different personalities. And there's one called an ISTP. That means they are introverted, sensing, which means detail-oriented, thinking as opposed to feeling, and P, which stands for perceiving, but it means that they're rule breakers. And this personality, they call them here the craftsman. I have names for him called the assassin or the champion because like a great diver who's so controlled and able to twist and turn their body in a certain way and so focused on themselves and technique and they can you know, practice 12 hours a day. That's an ISTP, okay? And a beauty queen is the same way. She's so careful what she eats and her skin and so forth. She's focused on herself and the details and she's not a sweet thing. She's a thinking thing, she's calculating. So ISTPs are adventurous and independent. They like to figure out how things work. They have great mechanical and technical skills. They live in the here and now, which makes them adaptable and spontaneous. They like to keep busy and are action oriented. They love the action. ISTPs thrive on new and exciting situations. I had some people who signed up for the course today and I told my coworker, Deborah, I said, hackers are last minute people. They like to do things at the last minute when, oh, the pressure's on, now I gotta do it. So that's an ISTP thing. Um, ethics and conscience are abstractions, which the ISTP does not appreciate. Rules are made to be broken. Technology and machines are king. So that is like an overview of an ISTP, which is like a hacker. I, I don't mind telling you, and I'm sure he won't be offended. Leo is a classic ISTP, okay? Um, he's, he's, really, he's really focused on the computer and what he can do with it. And he's really a top-notch uh, hacker and red teamer as you'll see throughout the course. He's a wonderful guy. I'm going to tell you more about him soon. So if you're not an ISTP and you think, oh, I'm a people person, I'm emotional, and you know, I'm big picture, so don't despair. There's room in this industry for all different kinds of people. Again, I'm not going to go into all the different categories. But here is, um, again, some of you saw this at the open house. I'm not going to show the video again. But just this um, graphic shows a lot that whether a person is a graphic designer or a social engineering trainer, which is like a teacher, or a network security administrator who is numbers and detail oriented, a social media consultant who's like out there and loves to talk to people, or an ethical hacker who's a hacker, right? Um, there's room for all these people in this industry. And again, the industry is thirsty for all kinds of talent. Switching gears a little bit, um, there's a Gemara in Yavamos, which talks about there's ace shalom and you know eight mil chama. Sometimes the world is at war and sometimes the world is at peace. Well, if I ask you today in the world, are we at war or peace? It's sort of confusing because, well, is it really World War III? So it's not like how we pictured World War III, but really we're in World War III. <laughs> the world is at war. And of course, there's a lot of soldiers. There's war between Russia and Ukraine and <laughs> Afghanistan and Iraq and a lot of stuff going on in Syria. But uh, primarily, the war today is cyber war. And as you know, the Iranians, you know, they're sinking our ships, we're sinking their ships and doing what we're doing to them and so forth. Uh, what happened recently in America with the oil pipeline. So this is cyber war and it's real and it affects all of us because not only are countries active in, cy in cyber war, but there's also cyber crime and they're interrelated. And so our credit card uh, data, our bank account, are all on the front line of this war. So it's different than other wars because in the civil war in America, half a million soldiers were killed, but the number of civilians killed in the civil war in the US is very near to zero, okay? Because they didn't kill civilians, they killed soldiers on the battlefield. But in today's war, cyber war, we're all on the front and everything is fair game. So it's, it's very different world. I wanted to show you 
Uh, the FBI's most wanted cyber criminals. You see some Muslims here, you see some Koreans, some Russians, Ukrainians, whatever. But look at the words here. Cybercrime is the greatest threat to every company in the world. One of the biggest problems with mankind, the impact on society's effect the numbers. In August 2016, Cybersecurity Ventures predicted cybercrime cost world $6 trillion, okay? Up from 3 trillion just uh, five years ago. But look at this. This represents the greatest transfer of economic wealth in history. It risks the incentives for innovation and investment and will be more profitable than the global trade of all major illegal drugs combined. So it's a really big deal. And I wanna talk about that, how sort of lucrative it is to be a hacker. And we're not teaching you to be you know, illegal hackers, black hat hackers, we're teaching you to be white hat hackers, to use it ethically to fight the hackers because we're really in a battle for civilization. Again, I'm a big picture person. I don't wanna wax poetic too much, but this is the good guys against the bad guys. It's cops and robbers. And we're training you guys to fight the bad guys on their own turf. Um, the cybercrime beats bank robbing because not everybody's willing to be a bank robber because you gotta carry a gun and, and you could get shot. But being a hacker, you can wear your pajamas all day you don't have to buy a gun. And the likelihood of ever getting caught is tiny. The identity theft statistics for 2020 aren't available, 2006. Federal authorities arrest 0.14% of the criminals, one person in 700 identity theft suspects. In contrast, nearly 45% of violent crime and 16% of property crime suspects were arrested. So in short, they're, it's attractive to bad guys who have no ethics and have no morals. They don't care about the law or anything else. It's very attractive to rob banks using hacking because it's not just banks you can rob. You can rob you know, other people who are not banks, but you can take other people's money and you can do all sorts of different cyber crime, but more or less it leads to getting other people's money illegally. And it's, it's attractive because you're very unlikely to get caught. And that's why it's a huge industry, the cybersecurity industry, to defend us, the good guys, against the bad guys. I want to talk a drop of Corona. Um, we found anyway, we, we, we had this course in class, then we had it combination hybrid, some in class and some overseas. And we found the best ways that it's all online. So this live online format has become a winning format for us. We actually have one person. We had last class also for one or two people who would come to our classroom to use the classroom. If anybody from nearby would like to do that, feel free to come to our offices and use our offices, just a place to sit, whatever. But obviously most of us are, are online. And the world has changed to being hy hybrid, hybrid and, and online. So it says, who led the digital transformation of your company? Was it the CEO, the CTO? It was actually COVID-19. Corona has changed the world and it will continue to change, and we're not past corona, right? Because after delta, I looked it up, what, what's after delta in the Greek alphabet? Epsilon, and there's a whole bunch of more letters, and so I'm afraid that we're gonna have a, a bunch more waves of this thing. Um, this is from Deloitte, how COVID has affected cybersecurity, and one of the things they say, there's been an influx of cyber criminals. People have lost their jobs and think, well, if I can't earn an honest living, I guess I'll become a hacker. So. Again, the, a lot of industries, you know, if you were in the hotel business or if you were selling concessions at, a, at baseball games, you got hurt during COVID. But if you were in cybersecurity, then your business uh, has grown. So we're in the right place at the right time. Uh, again, this is stuff you'll see over the length of the course, but I just wanted to name some names of things that you're going to learn about. And not only when you learn about them, you learn how to do them, how to do the attack, and then you learn how to defend against the attack. In the industry, there's a red team who are good guys who are trying to hack into a system to show its vulnerabilities. And then they write a report, giving the company greater knowledge of what they need to improve. And there's a blue team who is defending the company against actual hackers and bad guys. Anyway, just to teach you a few names, uh, a DDoS is the type of attack where they overwhelm your system so that you can't use your website because it's be getting all these essentially calls from a million computers from all over the world. SQLI is a, a database injection, you know, messing up your database, defacing a website, account hijacking, 
all different kinds of attack vectors, which you will learn about in the course. This is something I've, I personally found fascinating and it affects all of us who have you know, a credit card, a bank account, anything that we have to go to online and you're asked to create a password, a, a username and password. And so this is a chart showing the amount of time it takes for a hacker to crack your password. And I wanna teach you again, another term called brute force. If you wanted to break into a safe, you know, you could figure out the combination or you could use brute force, you know, put a bomb and, uh, and you know, brute force, get through it. Like you'd knock a door down. In cyber, brute force means go through all the possible combinations that the password could be, okay? And you, you of course have computer programs, you can write scripts that do that. So how long does it take to come up with a four, a four digit pin? Okay, and the answer is a computer can go through all the combinations of a four digit pin instantly, even up to eight digits if it's numbers only. But if you add to the set, not just nine digits, but also lowercase letters or upper and lowercase letters, that's already 52 plus 10 is 62. And then if you add um, symbols and then you have you know, a long password of let's say 12 digits, which includes numbers, upper, lowercase letters and symbols, then it would take 34,000 years to go through all those possible combinations. That's called a strong password. So I'm giving everybody from the first day of class homework to, to strengthen your passwords. They should be long, they should include numbers, upper and lowercase letters, and if possible, uh, symbols. That just makes your password so much stronger. And again, we'll talk about in the course, Leo will teach you about password managers and other, other ways to deal with this problem. But even if you just make up your own passwords and keep them on a piece of paper somewhere, which is okay. But look at this password I created, Kalvachoymer ben benoshel Kalvachoymer. So that's really long. And then I, I substituted exclamation mark symbols for my L's and I put zeros instead of O's and so forth. That's a very strong password. And it's not hard for me to remember because I know Kalva Choymer Ben Benosho Kalva Choymer. And my reminder to myself is it's from the 13 Midois. So I don't actually have my password written anywhere. I have a reminder that I know my password. But um, just like Socks, Leo says, don't give them out and change them frequently. Exactly. Okay, I'm going on. It's a market driven, the market of cybersecurity is driven not only by protecting and fighting bad guys and protecting the assets of the company, but in order to do business in today's world, you need to, there are regulations, laws and regulations and standards like the ISO, ISO 2000, whatever, that if you want to, you know, you have, if you want to have credit cards on your website, so then you need to be PCI compliant or the, et cetera. So Israel has its own Chok Haganat HaPratiyut. Europe has stuff. The health industry has HIPAA laws. Uh, publicly traded companies have uh, SOX. So because companies are obligated to do this by law, they have to hire people to manage their cybersecurity posture and situation. And so again, that's a driver for employment in this market. This is from um, Checkpoint. I, I like the infographic and I'll just focus on two numbers here on the right hand side of the page. 55% of the companies are lacking resources. 23% say their security teams are fully up to date, which means three quarters are not. And another important thing, uh, two other numbers, 45% use multiple vendors because no one company you know, provides you with all the tools. So it's, it's patchwork, it's a quilt. It's made of all different things. You gotta use different companies to get all the things you need. And so you need smart people to know how to use these different tools. And yet 52% of security teams lack expertise. So there's a million people working in the US in cyber, but they don't know everything they need to know. They have to keep training and learning more. And, and that is part of the point of this course, again, to give you the foundation. And it'll be only a foundation, but you'll have to keep learning throughout your career in cyber. So if you love learning, you come to the right place. The cybersecurity skill shortage is getting worse. It's not like we've solved this. It's gonna continue to be an issue um, for the next five and 10 years. So again, we, we're in a really uh, a good place for employment. Okay, I am switching gears a little bit to talk more about nuts and bolts of the course. 
I sent everybody a, a, a academic calendar. If I, I don't think I've uploaded it yet to the Slack channel, I will do that. But that gives you a sense of where we're going, what we're doing each of the weeks of the year. You'll see we're off uh, for the Jewish holidays. So from the September 12th to October 3rd, there won't be any class. Um, the course is comprised of class attendance, which means being here online. And I do take attendance at the beginning of class. And so like I, I asked everybody to put some sort of uh, clear name on your, your Zoom account, or even if you're borrowing someone else's so I could see who you are. Um, if you have a reason why you can't be here, that's totally fine. I do appreciate uh, knowing in advance you're not going to be here. It is there's energy in having the group online together. Sometimes you know you have some a reason you can't be here, so that's fine. You could watch the recording, but do do please let me know. So um, basically, the day after on Mondays, as soon as I'm able, I upload the recordings both to YouTube and to a Google Drive, a shared Google Drive, if you're able to download it or just watch it on YouTube, which I don't mind telling you, you can watch it double speed for the parts that you don't need, you know, to watch them at full speed, whatever. So that's a helpful tool. The Slack channel is really super valuable uh, because you're able to communicate with your peers, ask questions, share resources. And we found that it's just a, a wonderful source uh, a place people to share uh, the learning and the process together. Um, so there, there's homework with labs, you know, again, technical assignments. You need to do those. There's research. There are tests. You can see them. I put one, two, three, four, five, six um, exams uh, that Leo has planned. They're usually multiple choice or whatever, but um, yes, there are tests. Um, outside resources, a final project. I was super impressed with the final project that the students did um, of the previous course. It was just two weeks ago. Um, I, I don't mind sharing with you that our course has evolved over the past number of years. We had always good teachers, but Leo has taken our course to a new level. And now, um, based on Leo's leadership, our other course is also on a very, very high level. When you finish our course, it's as if you've worked in the industry for, for a full year. You're, you'll be shocked how much you're able to do and how much you know by the end of the course. At that point, and, and the truth is some students even beforehand will be prepared for an internship. We have some companies in Israel and elsewhere who are happy to take our students as interns to really teach them the ropes of interacting with some of the proprietary tools. Let's say in a SOC, a SOC is a security operations center and so you're watching attacks as they're going on and sorting them out and sending them this way or that, et cetera. So you're learning hands-on about working in the industry. And it ends ultimately, as I said, with placement. We're totally focused on your placement. And Baruch Hashem, we have a great record. In our previous course, I had a number of students that were placed already by you know, two thirds of the way into the year. And by the end of the course, I mean, realistic expectations, you have to give it a number of months after completion of the course. Finding a job is generally known as a year-long project, but we've had better, better results than that. Uh, really good placement rates uh, towards the conclusion of the course and, and the following months. So that is, that's what it's about. That's how it's going to be. Uh, this is, I think people don't, don't know this, that there are many branches of the cybersecurity field. And like I said, for different personality types, there's many different things going on. And we have students working in different things. We have students who are salesmen, and you know, they're that type. We have students who are threat, in threat intelligence. They're very studious, research and development, um, physical security, security architecture, vulnerability management. There's something called GRC, which is, I always forget about risk management and compliance, uh, governance. Governance, risk management and compliance, that's GRC. We have students working in that. And that's more like you know, an accounting type thing where you're working in a company and you are making sure that anybody that has access to the system, uh, governance, sorry, thank you. Um, anybody who has access to the system themselves have sufficient cybersecurity um, protocols and so forth. So again, my point here in terms of red team and pen testing or security operations, user education, training, let me talk about that. The first line of defense of any company particularly today where one of the main attack vectors, I didn't mention this word, and that word is phishing with the P-H-I-S, I-S-H-I-N-G, phishing. 
and it's drawing out information uh, illicitly through trickery. Um, you know, sending an email that says we're PayPal and we're closing your account unless you know you make a new password. Send us your new password. We're the IRS, and in order to get your tax refund, please send me your bank details. This is called phishing, and it can be done over the phone through an SMS, uh, in WhatsApp, and an email, and so forth. And it's huge, and it's the main way that the the um, the hackers are getting access into the system and then exploiting it. So we all have to be really aware of phishing emails. And your Gmail, Google, and Outlook are trying to protect you, but you, you still see stuff. You, you get stuff and you see it's phishing. Forget the Nigerian prints and all that, but you get things that say they're from PayPal and Google, and they really, in real life, they never ask for your password. So anybody asking for your password or just click here, whatever, be very wary and very careful. And so one of the main things that any company and any group and everybody needs to do, and that is to train, to train people to recognize this is an attack, this is phishing, don't click on that, don't go to that website, okay, it's, it's toxic. So um, cyber training itself, cyber training awareness is a really big field, okay, so that's uh, for those of you who are like teaching or people, you like to be with people and to teach that there's a, a huge place for that in this field. Okay, uh, sample jobs, this is about a SOC analyst. I actually watched this video, this is a pretty good guy. There are a million, I'll take this opportunity to say there's a million resources online um, on YouTube and many other libraries that you can learn about the things in the field and you will and, and, um, and use them is, is you know, my, short, <laughs> my short pitch. I'm again shifting now about your job, your career development. And I'm talking as, let's say, a career development guide, uh, guidance counselor about personal professional branding. And really, I want to say to you from right now, it's 20 to 6 or so in Israel on this day, you should change your identity, your professional branding. I'm now a cybersecurity student. Okay. And at some point in the year, you'll change that to I'm a cybersecurity professional, entry level, but I'm a cybersecurity professional. And that's called professional branding of how you think of yourself and how you present yourself to others. So I'm giving you a few tips here of creating your professional brand, figure out who you are. Okay, are you a pen tester? Are you a GRC? Are you a cybersecurity trainer? Determine for what you want to be known. Research the industry, follow the experts. We'll talk about LinkedIn and using social media to your advantage, if that's where you want to be. Embrace networking, talk to people about it, people in the field and so forth. And if there's a cybersecurity event, you know, I'd suggest you go and we'll keep you abreast of that and grow your online presence. And that's something that, you know, in just a few months, let's say, you'll be ready to, you could always re retweet or, you know, you, you read an interesting article, you pass it on, you post it on your LinkedIn account, stuff like that, so that you begin to make a name for yourself as a member of this growing industry. So that's about your professional branding. Another topic I wanna to talk about, people ask, and it's important, and that is uh, certifications. Of course, at the end of the co this course, we will give you a diploma from SOMET, and it says what it says, and it has its value, but you know, we are a boutique uh, cyber education program, whereas, the main way people communicate what they know in this industry, besides showing what they know uh, practically, is by getting certifications. And that's something, again, you should plan to do for the rest of your career, because I know that even experienced cyber professionals like Leo and our other teachers, they're all the time adding to the letters after their name by getting additional uh, cybersecurity certifications. There's a few different companies, uh, the eCouncil and CompTIA, uh, Cisco, who are giving different certifications on different aspects of the field. I'm actually going to show you a map in a minute. And I, I want to, though, sort of calm your nerves, maybe, by saying they're nice to have, but they are not must have, especially not for starters, and particularly not in Israel. Israelis are more like, show me what you know. But that's, that's the general attitude in the cyber industry, show me what you know. Okay, you'll come to a job interview, and they're going to ask you, what do you know? Show me. But these, um, 
these certifications are valuable credentials to have on your resume. It is something to think about already a few weeks in or a few months into the course, you can begin to think about it. This is CompTIA, CompTIA Pathways. And I'll just show you here, the ITF is like to determine if you're a good fit for the industry. So anybody here today, of course, we gave you a test and got to know you a little bit. So you've already passed that one. The A plus is really the video that I sent you, Leo recommended, which is getting to know your computer. The next topic, which we're gonna be, begin the course with, and that's networking. So there's a certification about networking, the CompTIA Network Plus. And we have had students who have successfully taken that test and added that credential to their resume. And other students said, you know, didn't bother, didn't want to. So either way is okay. This is something you'll decide for yourself. Uh, further into the course, you'll be at a stage where you consider taking the Security Plus, the next uh, test. And again, there's many online tools to help you study for that, in addition to everything you've learned in the course. And then you see that there's infrastructure pathway, cybersecurity pathway, professional skills, the, you, the, uh, the opportunities to gain more certifications will continue throughout the course. And if any of you watched um, the CyberStars, you have a beautiful program called CyberStars, which are people who are experienced in the industry, speaking live to the class, giving you guidance, mentorship. So a number of them spoke about which are more valuable, which are less valuable certifications. Um, there's a guy named Alazar or something. If you watch that one, he talks a lot about it. Okay, here comes the covenant, the Breet. And my picture here is no magic, no magic. Because like I said, the course is sort of wondrous in that it takes people who have no experience in the, or background in this industry and it prepares them to enter successfully the industry. And like I said, it really works. We have, we have so many examples to prove it, but it's not magic, okay? You can't just show up for class and it'll happen to you. You have to really invest. You have to work really hard. And, and the whole field of cybersecurity, like one of our successful students said, it's not a quick buck. It's not like, oh, you finish the course and you make a million dollars. It's not like that. You finish the course, you, you know, break your back, you sweat a lot to learn a lot and to try a lot and to hack a lot. And then you're in a position where you can enter and you can work hard and earn an honest living. So it is not magic. We have the capacity to provide you with skills and background that you need. We're opening doors, but you got to deliver the goods, okay? We can bring you to companies that are employing people, you know, starters, entry-level people. We have a number of companies that only want to hire so many graduates because we've supplied them with so many good people. And if you just think about it sort of socially for a minute, a lot of the people in a field like this are sort of geeks. They're sort of misfits. And our people, we may have some misfits, so we have a lot of wonderfully well-adjusted people who have a strong work ethic and have a family they want to support, both men and women. And so you're bringing a really more whole person to the job interviews so that if they know the stuff, if they know the cyber, the, the persona that they're presenting at that job interview is a much more whole persona than some misfit, you know, 19 year old person, whatever, I don't need to, to say more. But my point is we're gonna open doors, but you gotta deliver the goods. So we're asking you to be prepared to work hard. Um, Leo's a great teacher and he's gonna, give a ton of stuff, but you got to do it. You got to do the homework. You got to do the research and it should be, you know, at your own initiative. Um, and I have, we had a couple of students from two, both two other groups. One woman said, I'm addicted to this stuff. And the other guy said, I'm also addicted. It, there is a certain addictive element of there's so much going on in this field and it's fascinating and it's really endless because it's, again, it's mankind is facing this huge threat of the evildoers who are attacking the good guys and the sources of wealth and so forth. And so it's a constant battle and it's unending. So again, this is the covenant. We're asking uh, for two-way street here. We're gonna work really hard for you and we want you to work hard with us. Your new best friend, I say it sort of jokingly. I sometimes ask people, who's your best friend? Could be your spouse, could be your mom, could be a chavrusa, a, a, a man or woman you know, but I have, uh, an announcement, your new best friend. Your new best friend from today and onward is Google, okay? Whatever question you have, 
before you ask anybody else, Google it. Google's your best friend. It's unbelievable the amount of technical and every kind of information that is available on the internet. And so if you ask me before you ask Google, like, why are you wasting my time? You should respect my time that before you ask me, you should invest yourself in finding the answer. So there's a YouTube video and the Google instructions on just about everything under the sun. So that's always your new best friend is Google. Try to find the answer for yourself. Do your own research before you turn to somebody else to try and you know, spoon feed you the answer. Some key concepts and methodologies for success in the field, critical thinking and multitasking, think like the enemy. It's a fast paced environment, question everything. How does this work? How can I make the technology work in a way it's not supposed to work? Analysis, discovery, and solution. Analyze and understand technologies, policies, applications, and people. Discover vulnerabilities, exploits, and weaknesses in infrastructure, applications, and users. Determine the best course of action to reach a solution. From analysis and discovery, implement a solution to fix issues within the environment. So again, we're talking about turning yourself into a new person becoming a cybersecurity analyst, a cybersecurity specialist, a cybersecurity expert. And so it's gonna affect, again, your whole being and your brain and the way you do things. And so I, I want you to be open to that growth and to you know, take your first step. You've taken your first step by being here today, but I want you to realize what an enormous um, opportunity and sort of self-obligation to really buy into it and really invest in this process. So, you know, where's the, the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow? Uh, this is about hacking the gap. There's a huge gap of properly trained uh, professionals in the industry. There's nearly half a million job openings in cyber in the US. Um, I know we have students in England, we have students in Israel. It's international, okay? There's a shortage of good people in this field. I had a number here that there's 941,000 people working in it. 521,000 that are unfilled jobs. There's a huge opportunity here, okay? So again, the doors are open for us to walk through and earn our living. What are the salaries? So I wrote here that pay, the payoff is that knowledge is, is king, knowledge is money. Your, the amount you earn is, is clearly a function of your expertise. So it's not even how long you've been in it, but again, what can you do? So if you dive really deep, and you become a really great expert, or you know, you find what's called a zero day vulnerability, you'll learn about that, which is sort of like out of the blue, you found a way to hack into you know, Microsoft Windows, and then you don't exploit it, you turn to Windows and say, I found this zero day exploit, and you prove it to them, you have screenshots, you send to them, they pay you. That's called bounty hunting, okay? And that's, that's a way to earn a living, and that's an honest way to earn a living. And so if you're good at it, you can earn a lot of money. Anyway, how much does a SOC analyst make in the US? Uh, this is a very nice number, $104,000 a year. In Tel Aviv, you're not gonna start with this, I understand, but um, you can do really well in this field. These are two real people, part of our cyber stars. Uh, Jennifer Habshush took our course two years ago. She works today in AppsFire. I saw on LinkedIn, she just got a promotion. She just. You know, she didn't tell us exactly, but basically she was earning 15,000 shekels a month, which if you're in Israel, you understand that's a nice salary to start with. Most Haredi women working in this, that, or the other thing are earning six, eight, 10. And so if you're earning 15, you're doing well, but she's just starting out, you know? This other woman, Moran Frieder, she is like a mentor to some of our students. And she is like, um, She's an expert, okay? She's a senior technical trainer, it says. So she's teaching people how to use systems. She's really technical and she has a beautiful personality to teach people. But when she, um, she gave her, her speech to our class in the evening and she was with her child at home. And she said she works a lot of time from home. And she told us she was earning 35,000 shekels a month. Okay, that's $10,000 or more a month. So she's earning really well. She's a woman in her 30s who is working combination at home and in the office, having a really satisfying career. So really wonderful opportunities. Here's myself and my wife. I want to conclude my shtick here by introducing, introducing the faculty. Uh, I'm gonna tell you specifically about Leo in my next slide. He is our senior lecturer and an accomplished red teamer. 
Tana Kay, um, you'll see her name, you'll see it more. Um, she's on our teaching faculty. She is today working as a uh, CISO, which is a Chief Information Security Officer. She's a graduate of our program from three years ago and a, a really good friend to us. She's a wonderful woman living in Beitar. I know somebody said they're in Beitar Elite. She's also there. Omer Kerner, uh, be he began with us this past February. He's a lecturer in our other classroom. I know Lynn studied under him for a few months. He's actually a medical student. He was a commander in Unit 81. There's a couple of famous, famous units in the Israeli army. One is called 8200, which are, again, these are hackers and they're, they're creating techni technological solutions to help defend Israel and even attack the enemy. Unit 81 is super secret. I Googled it and you could find out a little bit about it. They're providing hardware solutions for the prime minister's office. They're doing top secret stuff. They, they can't tell you anything about what they did in the army. But interestingly, they're taking young men and women who did not necessarily have a background in cyber and they're teaching them everything like we do. And so Omer was in that unit and became a commander in that unit. So he's a born teacher and teaching people how to be excellent in cyber. One of his students was a, a guy named Nativ Lavi, and he's now also taught for us and has his own company teaching cyber online. He also became a commander in Unit 81. Some of you have had online interaction with Mrs. Dvorah Erlinger. She's wonderful. She was directing our recruitment program. She, she completed our course just a few weeks ago. She's a summit graduate. And she's now working as a cyber threat uh, analyst for CyberEyes and really enjoying that. Rena Schweitzer is my assistant um, in admin and finance. I know she's made contact with some of you about paying for the course. Uh, everybody's welcome to pay in installments, what's comfortable for you. Please cooperate with Rena on making it happen. Uh, credit card details, whatever, we'll charge you once a month, however you wanna work it out. My wife, Hannah, um, what can I say? Uh, she's a bulldozer eat. Okay, she's a really powerful woman. Uh, she's like a born businesswoman. She was a teacher and a, and a guidance counselor for many years, but really she was born to lead. And she has her people skills, um, her ability to reach out and cross over and connect uh, people and find solutions. She has really good business head to understand opportunities and to create something from nothing and, and lemon lemonade from lemons. So she's on your she's on your side and that's a really good thing to have Hannah on your side because she's tough. <laughs> she's a tough cookie. So you're happy that she's on your team. Um, I told you already a little bit about myself. I, I, run, I run the administrative side of Somit and I'm, I call myself the educational director. If you have issues with any of the platforms or anything about the program, if it's not about technical stuff or the, the, the content, so feel free always please to turn to me either through the Slack channel or I think you've all seen my, my email address, jartsomit. I don't share your email addresses with one another. I always BCC everything. I, I think it's sort of private. On the Slack channel, you have the opportunity to interact. Um, I, 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 it goes without saying, it's meant to be professional and with proper respect for one another. With that, I'm introducing Leo and then I'm gonna turn over uh, the program. So Leo is 30 years old, I think, because he was 29 last year when we started. He is happily married. And I edited this slide because last year he had four little hackers. And this past year, a few months ago, we were honored, Han and myself, to be the Kvater and the Kvaterid at the bris of his fifth little hacker. So Leo and his wife have five little boys, uh, Baruch Hashem. And he speaks languages, Spanish, English, Hebrew, Arabic, Yiddish, learning Mandarin. He has a degree in software engineering. Look at all the certifications Leo has. He's a red teamer, attacking infrastructure, web and mobile apps for many multinational companies. Uh, some of you recognize Nestle, Nokia, and the governments. If you have questions, catch him on WhatsApp, Slack, Telegram. I guess I will take just a moment about to sort of give a little bit of guidance on questions. It won't work if every time you have a question, you email Leo or put it on Slack. You have to uh, filter. You have to think about it. You have to research yourself. You have to reach out to your fellow students and really make efforts to answer your own questions. 
if after your research, you're unable to find how to get around this bug or whatever, and you, you put it to the Slack channel in the ask uh, channel, and then you need to reach out to Leo, that's okay. Be really specific. This is my question. This is what I've tried. It didn't work. I got this error and you know, with a screenshot, and then you could put it to the master. Okay, and I'll, I'll already steal some of Leo's fire. On, on many, many, many of his presentations, he always says, the master has failed more times than the student has even tried. So failure and you know, coming to dead ends is just a big part of this escapade of working in this field. So failure is okay. You just got to learn from it. You have to document it and, and move on. If anybody has any questions now relevant to what I said or the course or something, you're welcome to ask. Yeah, Otherwise, question. I think Leo will probably give you a five or 10 minute break. We'll see what he says. And then Leo will take over. Any, any, anybody? Yeah, I was just curious. Someone told me about uh, Metasploit. Are we going to be working with that at all as far as pen testing? Yes. Affirmative. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Our pleasure. So, Leo, uh, what, what time do you want to start? 610 or what do you say? Um, yeah, I think we're going to start for uh, yeah, in eight minutes. Very good. So, we're taking a break. See everybody at 610.